Oh, my goodness. San Diego State season. Nice headline, Blowout City. I don't know. I don't know how to tell you what I think about what's going on at San Diego State. Maybe I need not. People don't give a crap. That's the worst part of what's happened. And again, this is coming from somebody that broadcast Aztec football. First time around, I did it in the Marshall Falk era. John, they drew 48 to 51,000 fans a home game. I remember that. Last home game, San Diego State had 12,775 in the shiny new stadium. Product is just poor. Um, how can I couch this phrase? Sean Lewis comes on board as head coach. Uh, great resume. Great expectation. Greater disappointment. I can't tell you how disappointed I am. And what happened in Logan, Utah is just a prime example. They had a 13 nothing lead. Utah State, which is also 3-7, and seven, scored 41 points in a row against San Diego State. Defense just caved in. Offense has just never arrived. This, this fascinating 200-page playbook that he brought with him from Colorado that he polished at Kent State when they did so many great things just doesn't work right now. It's a byproduct. Offensive line's a mess. Had 10 different starting offensive linemen. 18-year-old freshman quarterback who's got guts. Danny O'Neill's been so impressive. Tough guy running back. Do you remember Darren Sproles, San Diego oh, Chargers? Yeah. Number we 43. Just talked about Austin Eckler. This kid, Marquez Cooper, is like them. I don't know if he'll play in the NFL. Maybe as a special the guy. Maybe he goes to Canada. But, boy, he's fast, and he plays with a fury, and he's tough. He can't do it by himself. But to see San Diego State just get sledgehammered the way they did by – what I think is a substandard Utah State team. This thing is in such disrepair. You know, they lost 42 players to the transfer portal. They never recovered. They lost 12 guys who went to division upper Division One programs. And then you add in all the injuries that wiped out the offensive line. So Sean Lewis, effective on Monday, got a lot of work to get done. I was stunned. I just came from the press conference. They're not even holding a season-ending football banquet for the players. Really? Yeah, he's. I, I was kind of shocked, but he says that's uh, that's why I've always done it. He says when we get to the end of the season, these guys scatter to the wind, huh? Camaraderie and all that things you've been preaching all season. He says now this, which I've never done it. It's just a personal coach's choice, which I think is really a strange way to end a football season. He says when we're in that locker room at eight o'clock Saturday Saturday night after the game, that'll be the final time we ever get together together as a group. He's got a lot of work to do. Uh, his job is not in jeopardy. I don't care what Aztec fans, social media say, but the better not be a three and eight or a four and nine football season next year. He's he's got to fix this. There's got to be continuity. They got to stop the bleeding of player personnel. So we'll see. I like them. I believe them. But boy, this was misery. And when they were getting killed in the fourth quarter. I texted my co-partner here who was sitting on the couch, passed out. <laughs> and I said, this sure looks like the end of the Chuck Long era. Do you remember yeah. that? Yes. They went to TCU or was it New Mexico? And they got beat 73 to six. And I thought, oh, boy, man. this, that Utah State looks as bad as that. So I feel really badly because the football program is really off the rails right now. And that's shocking considering what I broadcast and what I observed in our community, 48 to 51,000 in the Marshall Falk era when they tied BYU, when they tied USC, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, what we saw more recently with the tremendous runs of Neanderthal football, Brady Hoke run the ball, Rocky Long play defense, and all the success we had. God, that seems like a distant memory now in the rearview mirror. So I'm, I'm really disappointed there. Blowout City, Indiana. Early lead, Ohio State went down the field with the kid quarterback, Curtis Work, the transfer from Ohio U, couldn't get it in the end zone and wound up getting battered 38 to 7, maybe it was. Work had 68 yards passing total, got sacked five times. Ohio State, just big guy after big guy, just all over that quarterback. Alabama, ooh, Kalen DeBoer, speaking of tough first year. <laughs> His quarterback, Jalen Milrow, was a Heisman Trophy candidate when he started the season, boom, with a flash. 
Last seen, he threw three picks this past weekend. Alabama got blasted. Alabama is not going to be in the playoffs. The expanded playoffs that John Riley wanted. Low tide will not be in the playoffs. <laughs> Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin. This is shocker. They got beat this weekend, despite the fact their quarterback, Jackson Dart, threw for 323, but they kept turning the football over. They've been kind of an up-and-down football team since the blazing start at the start of the season. Colorado, wow. Deion Sanders, not real happy with anybody. Should be really upset at his son, the quarterback, Shadur. Deion Sanders says, we spent too much time celebrating who we are, and we got our ass kicked. Kansas is running back. 278 all-purpose yards. Kansas Jayhawks punch Colorado on the mouth, knock Colorado out of a potential playoff spot. Arizona State, they ambush BYU. BYU, which was 9-0, and has now lost two in a row. Sun Devil fans went crazy. Kenny Dillingham has done a hell of a job at Arizona State recruiting, especially in the transfer portal. So they, they nail BYU. The Sun Devils are right on the periphery of a playoff spot. They're 9-2 really? in what was supposed to be rebuild year. Wow. Because they've been down for a chunk of time. So that's kind of interesting. And once upon a time, USC, UCLA was kind of important, but they did play, right? What? Uh, oh, that's <laughs> right. I It was not in the Sunday paper. It must be at the back of the... Monday paper talking about two days old news. <laughs> USC beat UCLA. It was not a masterpiece. I was like, can I use my Rembrandt quote? Yeah. It's not a masterpiece, more like a smudged kindergarten finger painting. It was not <laughs> impressive. Uh, but uh, Jaden Maiava led them to another victory. So USC is feeling better now at six and five. And UCLA is now four and seven and a wasted season going to the the Big Ten Conference. So those are hot headlines in college football. And John Riley says, you weren't cursing at the TV watching the Aztecs get smoked at Utah State, were you? I was flipping channels, and every game I was watching was a disaster. Yeah. I was rooting for Colorado. I was rooting for Indiana. I was rooting for the Aztecs, and they all got killed. But imagine being an Indiana Hoosier football fan who has suffered for decades, had been beaten by Ohio State something like, what is it, 25 or 30 years in a row. Since 1988, pal, the math is 36 years in a row. 36. And you finally have a team. You're undefeated. You're ranked number five. You go into the horseshoe. You had a 7 nothing lead. And I was like, hey, it's this is going to finally be it. And then everything went to hell in a handbasket. Couldn't put the ball in the end zone. They were down there three times and scored one touchdown. Yeah, and, and Rourke was just overwhelmed. I mean, he, he take, he'd take drop back three steps, and he immediately have like, big guys on him. There was no chance there. Um the Colorado game was something. It's clearly that the team underestimated their opponent. I saw Coach Prime's post-game speech, and I loved every bit of it. I'm a big Prime fan. But there were a lot of times that the Kansas defense was taking shots at Shadur Sanders and, like, taking out his knees or, or like, hitting him when he was down. That was cheap shots. Shadur shoved the referee and did not get ejected from the game. I'm really surprised at that. I guess they play for a different set of rules with Coach Prime's kids versus anybody else. Well, he's probably frustrated at all the crap he was getting. You don't do that to a ref. Yeah, you don't. No, it's not that. <laughs> so that's where we are. But yeah, Kansas just and they were playing at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. It was the stadium was not full, but I mean, I I swear everybody came across the state line to see that game. So that's a one time thing. But it is interesting. Kansas has now beaten three ranked teams this season. Lance Leopold. It was a Small college coach, I think, at the University of Buffalo. He's got in there. He's done a really good job. But the Big 12, can you name anybody in the Big 12 that you think is a dynamic football team that should be in the playoffs? I can't. Well, I used to think it was Colorado, but who's no. who's left? No, it's not Oklahoma State. It's no. not Iowa State. It's no longer BYU. Maybe Arizona State kind of backing in. Can you imagine that Big 12? They're going to get somebody in who probably gets knocked out in the first round. How's that possible? That's crazy. I mean, and, I mean, Baylor is down. Texas Tech is down. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing. Well, Nebraska is in the Big Ten. I always get that one yeah. confused. Amazing. So those are all things college football. You got a comment. Hey, you're on the live stream with us. That's why we do the fans forum 
want you to jump on board, give us an opinion on some of the games that we have just talked about. We get to have.